Okay, let's study. So this, so for these days, there's always some, there are always some sessions talking about the virtual machine-based container and the service use case. So for my topic, I will focus on the device interrupt virtualization for this use case. Okay, so let's quickly uh, go uh, have a recap on the interrupt controller available on x86 platform. Uh, the first uh, interrupt controller is called PIG. Uh, it has pr two problems. First, it can only support a very limited number of the interrupt. So typically, they only support the uh, up to 15 net, uh, interrupt across the, the, the whole machines. And the second problem is you can only deliver an interrupt to a single CPU. So no SMPs. To solve this issue, we then can, we come to the next generation of the interrupt controller, which calls APIC. For APIC, we have two uh, two parts: the IO APIC on the device side and the the local APIC on CPU side. For IO APIC, it can support up to typically up to twenty four interrupts. Uh, for for the for across all the devices, and the most important, it can uh, route the interrupt to different CPUs. So that's very really important when we have the multi cores. Well, for both PIC and APIC, we actually they are implemented with some hardware interrupt lines. So so it's kind of hard to scale up. With if we want to support more interrupts. MSI on the other side uses a message-based mechanism to deliver interrupt. So it doesn't use the interrupt lines anymore. The, the interrupt information, like a vector number and the destination, are included in this message so that all the destination information are are already available. Well, MSI typically can support, uh, I guess, set, set it to interrupt per device. And for the extended version, MSI X can support even more. Well, MSI, the, the, the downside is uh, MSI is PCI specific. So uh, it's part of a PCI. PCI device. So, if we want to do the, uh, the, the want to use MSI for non-PCI device, is kind of hard for us. There's some already some device like some HPET use MSI, but the that the support is in a very high way. Both QMU and KVM provide the what is interrupted controller emulations in both uh, um, the, the USB emulation and the kernel emulation depends what you really care. For example, if you care about the, the performance, then you run the, then you use uh, the KVM emulation, the kernel emulation. If you care about the security, that you, you don't want to the expose the attack service in the kernel, you probably want to use the uh, Kernel emulation, uh, emulation. What you 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 actually you can use the combinations. So Kumu provide an uh, option so that you can use that with a combination. Well, KVM and Kumu provide all this legacy and uh, modern interrupt emulations is for general purpose usage case. So for today's my topic, I will focus on some narrow down use case. Our focus, so uh, we focus on the container and the server needs USG case, as I just mentioned. So sometimes it's called a lightweight virtualization USG case. Examples include the fire cracker or color containers. So both of them are KVM based uh, container, container or server needs solution. Well, the, the big change here, comparing to the traditional virtual machine, is the 
user interface we exposed for a traditional virtual machine, we expose a machine interface, where for container and server is using model, we just expose the system core interface to a containers or the server applications. So for traditional virtual machine, since we expose machine interface, so we need to update the hardware spec. Since the guest, I assume it runs on a true bare metal server. Well, for container service, service is use case, virtualization is still being used, but it's just some internal code of the in inf infrastructure. So that gave us some opportunity to improve. Another as aspect of our focus is the, we only want to support limited, very limited device types. This is possible because uh, we, we're not going to run a full function virtual machine. We have a full control of the guest kernel, so we can do what, what we really need, what is the effective way for a solution. For example, the FreckRack use a pure virtual system. For us, we also use a pure virtual system. Uh, X86, this yes, a uh, virtual can be run on two transport layers, virtual over PCI and virtual over MMIO. Virtual PCI uses a modern MSI and MSI inter X interrupt mechanism, while for virtual uh, MMIO, it now just uses a legacy interrupt ne interface. So we have built a pure virtual system with the uh, virtual PCI transport layer, and we are continuing to stick a better solution based on virtual MMO. So what's the motivation for us to turn to the virtual MMO from the virtual PCI? The answer is a network. So we have a rough statistics on the number of files and the line of code that we, we for whatever transport layers, for the two transport layers, for both Linux kernel guest and the Kumi backend. So the data is up rest, the whatever MMO is much, much later. So even you can reuse some configurations to remove some of the code, or, or manually you try to, just like us, we already did some work to strip down the PCI stuff that we don't necessarily need, but they are still not in the same level. So looks like whether MMO is exactly the fit for our used case. So this is why we adapt to, we, we try to find some options to, with this, with this transport layers. So basically, this code allow us to achieve a short boot time, higher density, or some more attack service. So those are critical for our use case. Let's say what's the minimum requirement for, for us to deliver an interrupt from the device to the, to the guest kernel. So first, we want the device to support a multi interrupt for performance. The second requirement is we want the interrupt balancing support so that we can make full use of the, the multi core capability in the guest kernel. And the third, and the third we want, we, we, we wish that the interrupt delivery can be very fast. So let's check the multiple interrupt support. This is the current status for whatever MMO. Both configuration change notification and the queue change notification share the same IR code. So that is not good since in the guest interrupt handler, we have to check what is exactly the interrupt is. Is it a configuration change or is it a code change? If it's a code change, which code it is? Also, this Preventing us from doing the real, the true parallelizations. The rest side is what we want. 
So for every for configure change and the queue change, they basically they have their own interrupt vector allocated, and that a virtual device can can inject the device into the case independently. This is basically what is the status in for the virtual PCI, but for virtual MMO, we want to see. The next requirement is the interval balancing. So the for current for current virtual MMO, first it's only, there's only one uh, one interrupt. So once we add more interrupt, this we want the interval balancing. So at the case kernel can see that the IRQ can pin the IRQ to different with APOs so that it can make some work balancing or make the effective use of the case CPUs. Right side just shows an example that for virtual net, we just pin the configuration notification and the queue change notification to different CPUs so that we can uh, finally use the, the, all the v CPUs in the case. So we have several solutions, the two solutions. The, this is the first solution. This solution, we basically we want to reuse the MSI that existed for the uh, virtual PCI because MSI is already supported multi interrupt and also it is supported interrupt balancing. So once we enable that, we will get this capability. So to to support this, we actually write some draft code. So besides adding the MSI register format to the virtual MMO configuration, for multi interrupt, we also needed to introduce more fields, like we need to provide new fields for guests to configure the vector that, that will be used for, for configuration change or queue change. For interrupt balancing and the interrupt status and control, we just use the, the existing registers available in MSI. So for this solution, we, 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 we have pretty good code sharing with the existing PCI code across the QMU, KVM, and the guest kernel. Well, the, there's still some downside that the, 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 the actually it's, it's hard to do that cleaning. And also the effort is, is, is actually not, not a travel effort since in our practice, the, because we want to get rid of the PCI code, so MSI sometimes code is tight, close with uh, PCI code, so it's, sometimes it's quite hard for us to do that where we can. So then we have the solution too. We call it right of interrupt storage, or, or in short, VIS. So for this solution, we also try to reuse the MSI conception, but we will try to make some modifications. So to make it clean, and also we will uh, make some improvement so that we can get even better performance than MSI. Let's see the, this is a, uh, basically the spec change proposal from us. So the left side is MSI X, uh, a register layout, the right side is VIS. So, so similar to VIS, we also have a root table that point to three chart tables. Let's see the details. So for the, the, the header, the header t structure, that we, we will remove the things like the capability ID and the less capability ID. We don't actually need that, so we just remove that. And for message control, we just actually a, a table size that is useful for us. So we use the table size, we refine it as a vector count. And the, the, for the table set, table offset and the PBA offset and the table uh, by index register and PBA by index register, 
Those are kind of two pieces specific, so we just use some memory offset to instead of that. By using this, we can remove the, totally remove the PCI conceptions. The next change is for the, MS, uh, for the message entry format. So we, re, we, we reuse the message address and the message data format because we, have to, we, ha we don't have to do like this. But for our prototype, we just for simplicity, we want to reuse the existing KVM API so that we, can, we don't need change. And uh, so, we, so we use that. So we use that directly. But for the vector, con vector control register, we did some modifications. So the motivation behind this is that the, we want to improve, we want to reduce some necessary we may say that that for MSI, uh, we, because of, for the, all the entry registers, they are mixed together. But if you look at the, all the registers among, the, among those, you will find that we only care about, we only need to trap the vector control. We don't need to trap the message address or message data registers. So because of, for MSI, it, those registers are just mixed together. So, in, for example, in EPT mapping, it's hard for us to set the different permission. So that they will, some, some registers will drop and another will not drop. So we split that, move it to a new table, so that we can set a different permission. So that only the vector control will get dropped, while the others will not get dropped. Well, for vector control, there's some of the fields we actually, for our case, we don't necessarily need. So we only care about the mask bit. So we, this table only, we call it mask bit array table. So it contains only the, just like the PBA tables. So it contains, includes the mask bit. Uh, for PBA array table, we just reuse that. They're already in a separate table. Okay, so let's say what we also try to uh, find a way that uh, how can we get the, how fast we can achieve for the interrupting delivery from the, for example, from the cumulative device model to the guess, what, guess interrupt handler. This is some cycles of a delivery uh, interrupt in this period that we connected in our machine. So for cumul part, there's about 500 cycles. So we have no at the code, but there's not room opportunity for us to improve because it's most of the IO epic handling. But for Kevin part, it's, there's almost 10,000 10, cycles. But when we look at the code, it's actually not the time spent in the Kevin itself. There's another context which also including in these cycles. So, I, so one option is to use a post-interrupt. If in Cumul, you call the Kevin City echo, in, if post-interrupt is, in, is enabled, you will get immediately injected into the VCPO. So for us, I think we need a carefully configuration to make it effective. The code is there, but we need some configurations. The next one is uh, the, 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 the cycles in the, in the guest interrupt handler. So the biggest the overhead comes from the right to the EOR, EOR registers. Intel does provide a EOR virtualization mechanism, hardware features, and also we have the software enabling code in the KVM code, but during our Prototype we found that part of the code even does not function. So we better fix to reduce this trap to the VMX, to the hypervisor. So totally we can, with, by using these hardware features, we can totally reduce almost uh, uh, more than 20,000 cycles and that requires several interrupted runtime, almost nine milliseconds. 
So this is a summary. So we are building a new interrupt system for container and services with the minimal features, the multiple interrupt support, and the interrupt balancing support. We also prototype several options, a pure radio system with uh, both PCI and uh, MMO as a transport layers. And for radio MMO transport layers, we, we use uh, MSI, and we also use a new, new radio native interrupt mechanism. And then last, we also use hardware, we try to as, use hardware feature as much as possible to improve the interrupt delivery. So what's the next? So for both the MSI and the VRS, we need to we need to change the spec. So it's time to change the spec. But this, but what I'm showing is just some proposal from us. It doesn't mean it's a final solution. So we want want to hear your opinions on this. Also, we already have some draft code, so we want to contribute this draft code to both upstream, the current upstream, current upstream, or just kind of change upstream. Uh, another difficult thing for us is uh, assign, assign device. That's uh, how can we do pass through with this solution? It's kind of difficult, but we are, we, we are thinking about this. So basically, it's not undoable. So we are trying to find a way that even without the PCI code, how can we try to assign a device to the to from the host to guest? Okay, that's all I have. Any question? Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, very interesting. The, the base assumption is that you're basically scared of PCI, right? Um, you're scared of Linux PCI code being slow. You're scared of um, the QMU attack surface of the PCI code. It's, it's just that basically you're digging yourself a rabbit hole um, out of PCI into essentially duplicating most of its functionality with a separate video specific interface, correct? Yes. Okay. Can't we just simply make the PCI surface smaller, make that fast, um, maybe propagate, um, pre-propagate pre information? Uh, I, I understand that currently, um, say, for example, scanning a PCI bus might be slow, but we may as well just invent, a, say, an ACPI extension to just limit us to devices we know exist. Right. Should, wouldn't it make much more sense to just leverage the existing PCI infrastructure and just trim it down to a scope where we are satisfied with the initialization time that it takes, and then we can reuse all the interfaces and don't reinvent the wheel five times again? Mm, yes. Yes, actually, we, as I mentioned, we already did that. We, we, we based on, on the Rust VM, we built a cloud hypervisor. So in that project, we actually use a pure PCI based radio device. So that code can already be very smaller. So just, so compared to the just radio MMO we uh, currently we prototyped, so there's still some gap. We, there's, so there's one, there's two directions. One direction is if we can reduce the radio PCI to even smaller. So that, that's the possibility. I, I, I'm not sure. We will try to continue to optimize that path. So the other path is just a, uh, this the what MMO. I, I agree, and we, we essentially will end up with the same result at the end of the day, just that we suddenly end up with something that is actually backwards compatible if we stick to PCI, which I would way prefer over everything else. Um, yeah. So if, if we could just simply focus our efforts on making PCI, the PCI-based approach go fast, I, I'd be much happier. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Okay. If there are no other questions, thank you. Okay. Enjoy the lunch.